Hey guys, RT here off the Don't Meter Group, and in this one we're talking about Class E or Echo, 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 Airspace. I'll be right back. Okay guys, in this one we're talking about Surface Class E or Echo Airspace. Class E or Echo Airspace requires authorization. As I've repeated about Class B, C, and D airspace, there is no published time as to how long it will take to receive that authorization. Now I have a question for you. It's recommended that you request your authorization how many days in advance? Ninety days. Now, for most of the United States, Class E airspace doesn't start until 700 or 1200 feet, depending on your location. Of course, for most of us as responsible pilots, it doesn't matter because we won't be above 400 feet anyway. Now, let's take a quick look at a sectional chart for Mount Vernon Airport in Mount Vernon, Illinois. As you see, there's a faded magenta circle and an attached section extending to the northeast surrounding Mount Vernon Airport. This is called a Class E transition area. It starts at 700 feet AGL or above ground level and continues up to Class A airspace. Anywhere outside the faded magenta area is called the domestic in route and Class E airspace starts at 1200 feet AGL unless designated as another type of airspace and also continues up to Class A airspace. Now, take a look back inside of that faded magenta area and you'll see a dash magenta line. This is surface E class airspace and it surrounds the airport. This surface class E airspace starts at the surface and continues up to the start of class A airspace or 17,999 feet. Okay, that's all I have for now on surface class E airspace. The next one is all about class G airspace. Remember, if you want to learn all there is to know about the FAA Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate, check out RemotePilot101.com. Link is in the description below. You won't regret it. As always, subscribe, like, share, comment, and follow. And of course, fly safe. Peace.